Riccati's equation. Please make sure you watch this video to the end. So let's get started. So when we talk about the Riccati's equation, it's very simple when you understand the concept and you use that to solve the Riccati's equation. So Riccati's equation is all about substitution and differentiation and adding integration and finding the integrating factor. Now, so we are going to take an example and um, show that we can therefore understand how to solve the Curtis equation. So let's take an example which says y prime is equal to negative 2 minus y plus y squared. And with this, they will always give you a value for y1. So y1 here is equal to 2. That is the value for y1 for this equation. So with the Riccati's equation, they will always give you y1. So as you can see, the Riccati's equation is expressed in this form. That is how always the Riccati's equation is expressed. And always they will give you the value of y1. Why would they give you the value of y1? There is an equation or there is an equation that you must know about Riccati's equation, which is this is the main thing you must know about Riccati's equation, which is y uh, that is z is equal to 1 over y minus y1. Whereby now they've given the y1 to be 2. So what you do now is you substitute. So after substitution, you know that y z is equal to y that is 1 over y minus 2. Now, the next thing to do is to make y the subject. So, from this equation, we're going to make y the subject. So, when you make y the subject, we're going to get this. And please, how we make this y the subject is through cross multiplication. That is, when, let's do it here, it will be z bracket open y minus y2 is equal to 1 and you what you divide through by the d and after you send it to the other side which will give you positive so after making y the subject we therefore find y prime that is we find the derivative of y now when you find the derivative of y we have this this is because we are going to use chain rule for this so for example when finding it when y prime you know that 1 over z is the same as z exponent negative 1. So we're going to get z exponent negative 1 minus 1. That will be z exponent negative 2 and z prime. And in indices, you can therefore arrange this in this form. That's why we have this. Because when you 1 over z exponent 2 is the same as z exponent negative 2. That's why we had it here. And the z prime because it's the derivative. After two, doing that correctly, what you do now is now we try to substitute it into the original equation given to us. Wherever you see y, you're going to put in this, and wherever you see z, um, wherever you see y prime, you're going to input what this. So you do substitution. So as you can see, wherever you see the y, you're going to put in the here, and wherever you see the y prime, you're going to put in. The equation that we derive now after that is what you've done here by substitution because this is y prime and this is y and this is y squared when you break this one down you're going to expand this when you expand this you're going to get expansion of this you're going to get that is 4 over z plus 4 plus z squared you can do expansion for that after doing expansion there will be cancellation for this because the four aspect when you expand this as in you're going to get z times z that is you're going to open the bracket that will be one over z plus two bracket close and another bracket one over z plus two and when you do this expansion you know that at the end when you do it correctly, you are going to cancel out. It means that when you open this bucket, 
you're going to get negative 4. And with this, when you expand it, you're going to get 4 inside, which will cancel this negative 4. That is this negative 4 from it. So when you open this bracket, this bracket is going to be negative 2 minus 1 over z minus 2. And the negative I'm talking about is negative 2, negative 2, which will give negative 4. When you expand this, you're going to get 4, which will cancel out this negative 4. four. And you're going to get 4 over z. So I think you get 4 over z plus 4 plus z squared. So I think the 4 that I'm talking about, this 4 will cancel this 2. And this will be 4 over z minus 1 over z, which will give you 3 over z plus z squared. So when you do that correctly, this is what you get. So when you therefore simplify this, this is what you get. Are you getting it? Sure. This is what you get. So you are going to get this one because when you multiply it, you had this. The reason I had 1 over z squared would be. 1 over z times 1 over z, which will be 1 over z squared. Now, when you are done with this, you try making this equation very nice by multiplying through by um, z squared. So, when you do that, you are going to arrive at something like this. Because, and also, you want to take care of the negative sign. So, you are going to multiply through by what? Negative z squared. So, when you multiply through by negative z squared here, this will get rule, and this also will go. But since it's negative, it will affect this. And one of the z will go. I get it. That's why I have this. Now, after getting this, you need to arrange it in a way that it become linear. So, we try making the sending this one here as a linear form, always it goes here and this comes here, right? Now, after getting this, we we'll try finding the integrating factor, which is from our definition. Integrating factor is the e exponent, the integral of p x, and p x is this one. So, when you try finding the integrating factor of that, you're going to get up. The integrating factor giving you e exponent 3x because the integration of 3, integrating of 3 with respect to s is going to give you 3x. After when you are done, you are going to use the integrating factor to multiply through this whole equation. And the trick here is that for me, I don't do that. You just take z and multiply it by the integrating what factor equal the negative one. You take the integral of what the negative one. There is negative one here, so that's it. So when you take the integral of this, you end up getting z times e exponent 3x is equal to negative e exponent 3x over 3 plus c. I know you understand how I had this because with integration, what we divide and there's negative here. After getting this, you are trying to make z a subject. Therefore, you want it, you divide through by, you want to make z standalone. So you divide through by e exponent what, 3. When you do that correctly, you're going to get negative 1 over 3 plus c all over e exponent 3x because you divided through it. So after doing that, now remember that the first equation we did as z is equal to y over y minus y1, which is what? 2. So therefore, you come and substitute it into the equation and you get this. Now you try making what? Why the subject from this? Please make why the subject and please comment it on the, the comment of this video. That you should comment the answer on the on this video so that we can have some interaction. So you try making what why the subject. After making why the subject, you are going to go. And this z can be expressed as this c can be expressed as e exponent negative three x. This is indices. So you can just bring this one here and make it negative. Yes. So, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you like this video and please comment and like and also subscribe for more videos. Thanks.